Hey, we're back at the Democratic National Committee's convention, and of course, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we're with some of our favorite people. You know, I've always said this, folks. Teachers are the most important profession in America, and we're here with the National Education's Political Association, National Education Association's Political Director. I can get that out. Karen White, and, and, we're, and we're great to have you with us, and you know, it is the most important profession. I sincerely mean that the teachers have had such an impact in my life. And we got these battles, and they're across the states. Tell me what you're doing and what is at stake for teachers across this country. We know there have been budget cutbacks throughout the country. There have been a lot of budget cutbacks, and I'm glad to hear you say that, because we can't approach education from one aspect. We have to approach it from a holistic aspect. Funding is part of it, but we also have to make sure that we have educators in the classroom. What's happening now is so many educators are being laid off, and you know, we have empty chairs where the teacher sits, but the chairs where the children and the students sit are still full, and they keep coming back more and more. And so what's happening is class size is growing up, things like art and after-school activities and uh, foreign languages are being cut. And that is not the way to approach a holistic education. There are states that are cutting pre-K. A couple of states are doing half-day kindergarten instead of full-day kindergarten right now. Our members are really engaged in this election because they know what's going to happen to students. And as a mom of three kids in public schools, I have a first grader, and she only gets to be a first grader one time. And if she doesn't have the attention from a quality educator to help her get through that year, she's not going to get that year back again. In this election, it could not be more clear. There are two approaches to education, President Obama is 100% supportive of educators and funding and keeping them in the classroom. Mitt Romney believes that the only students that should get a quality education are the ones that can afford it. And we believe that a quality education should be had by every student in this country, regardless of their economic circumstances. One of the things that I, I can't get over, and, and this, is, this is to me, um, if you get rid of teachers and if you overpopulate the classrooms that are now there, you're losing kids. And if you lose kids, you lose the future of the country. You lose the future of the country, you become a third world nation. Right. I mean, there's a snowball effect here that really is trickle down. There absolutely is, and I'm so glad to see that you recognize that. I'll tell you, what's happening is so many of these states are offering tax rebates or tax loopholes to big companies and instead of investing in their communities and their education that has uh, an effect on public education and our economic development for our future public education is the only way that every child has access to the american dream and if we don't invest in our kids it's definitely only going to be playing against us for the future of our country we're talking uh, with the national education associations uh, karen white here on the Jeff Santos show. Now, give me give me an idea of where you are going to be focusing. What are the states? What are the areas that we should keep an eye on? Where a lot of proposition ballot initiatives, as well as races that could determine the future of teachers in those states? Well, we are focused all across the country, first and foremost on the re-election of President Obama, because it's clear that that's the right choice for education and for educators. But we're also focused on states' uh, down-ballot races, for example, state legislative races, where those votes that they take in state legislators are so critical to the future of public education. Governors' races in states all across the country, so whether it's Florida, New Hampshire, Michigan, we're in Arizona, we're in Iowa, we're in Minnesota, we're in Ohio, we're in Pennsylvania, we're, we're in Maine. We really have got to figure out how we can build back progressive pro-public education legislatures across this country. And we don't need it to be about divisive politics. What people need to understand is the teachers union is made up of bus drivers and school nurses and teachers and paraprofessionals and people who serve lunch every day and make sure that the school environment is clean and safe so that kids can be healthy. That is what the National Association, National Education Association is. Over three million members in all 50 states and so they are active and mobilized at every level of the ballot this year. It's too important not to be. It certainly, it certainly is. It's an, an amazing amount of time that has gone by over the last two years. We saw the collective bargaining issue happen in Wisconsin. We saw it in Ohio and they and they kicked butt on that on the uh, on the good side of things. I, we turned a corner. I mean we know a lot of people say well Walker won but to me that was a whole different thing. You had a lot of money on the Walker side. Barrett had a, com had a, had a competitive uh, primary race. It was yeah. very very quick turnaround. I think the momentum is on the right side here. 
I completely agree with you because I think the middle class of this country sees what's happening and they see the divisiveness that came out of the Republican convention in Tampa last week where you had Chris Christie instead of talking about educators and honoring teachers as they are coming back into the classroom last week basically vilifying them and saying that he doesn't believe that there's a place for public employee unions in this country and if teachers and educators across this country could afford to write five million dollar checks like the Koch brothers and the big corporate entities that are funding uh, the Romney campaign, it would be a completely different story, but we know that's not the case. I don't know one person, Jeff, that can write a check for $5 million. I don't even know people that can write a check for $500 because educators are middle class families. They're raising their own children. They're trying to take care of their students. And so I feel like the momentum is on our side because the middle class knows that this is about their future and it's going to also be about the future of everybody in the country. Karen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you spending time with us. Happy to do We've it. We've been talking to the National Education Association. This is Jeff Santos in Charlotte at the Democratic National Committee.